Hi guys, it's Rie. Hi, my name is Keanu, founder and CEO of Chikoni. Today, Keanu and I are going to show you how to cook steak at home. This dish is kind of inspired by Benihana because it has rice and garlic chip and soy sauce and mirin, and it is full of flavor and such a crowd pleaser dish. I don't cook steak that often at home, but when I cook it, I want to make it really good. First, I season ribeye with generous amount of salt, and I want to salt evenly from back side, and I salt kind of higher place, so salt hits bigger surface area. Cook steak in room temperature, so while steak is resting, let's cook garlic chip. For slicing garlic, so this time I'm using mandarin slicer because I want to slice the garlic even thickness. If the thickness is not uniformed, thinner slice get burnt and thicker slice is not cooked well. So make sure garlic slice is evenly thin. Once you slice garlic, transfer them to a small pot and cover with grapeseed oil. And make sure garlic is separated. Start with cold oil and turn on the heat and cook with low heat and make sure it's low and slow. Once garlic is turning light brown, transfer to paper towel lined plate. And if you wait too long, garlic tends to get too dark. Make sure transfer it when it turns light brown. Okay, so garlic chips are done, let's cook steak. So right before cook the steak, I season salt one more time. Heat the pan, I'm using cast iron pan, and use the garlic oil, you just fry the garlic. Because the oil absorbs the garlic flavor, and it will taste delicious. So heat up the garlic oil, and see the steak. So I'm using spoon to press against ribeye, so it has a nice brown crust on the surface and flip the steak and I am adding cold butter and garlic bits. This garlic is the leftover from my garlic slice. I didn't um, slice to the end because I didn't want to cut my finger so there is like a little bit left I'm using to baste the steak. Butter basting is great technique because you are cooking from bottom and top. You're basically pouring hot butter on top of the steak so you are also cooking from the top. And also butter has so much flavor so it's gonna be delicious when you finish cooking the steak. Once you cook the steak, you want to rest the steak. While the steak is resting, I'm going to make sauce and side dish slice garnish. So let's make sauce. In a small pot, I'm melting butter and grated garlic. And once garlic is cooked, I'm adding mirin. I want to make it simmer so alcohol evaporates. Bring it to a boil. I'm adding soy sauce. Also, I'm adding steak juice, because why not? I think it adds a nice flavor. Bring it to another simmer and set it aside. Now I'm making side dish sliced garnish. For this steak, my side dish is rice and I am seasoning with lemon. I want to add some acid elements in my side dish because steak is very rich, so it cuts the fat. I'm adding fresh herbs. This time I'm using chimes and flat leaf parsley. My arby lemony rice is ready, and now I'm going to cut the steak. I wanted to make medium rare, but I think I ended up cooking medium because my steak was a little thin, but it's delicious anyways. So I'm slicing against the grain and you want to kind of slice kind of long cutting slice motion so you are not kind of sewing. So once I put steak on top of the rice, I'm kind of arranging fresh leaves. This time I'm using arugula. I think arugula for this dish is great because it has a little bit of bitterness. So it's a nice balance of richness from the steak. So as a garnish, I'm using arugula and radish. I think these peppery vegetables add nice flavor components to this dish. Now I'm adding sauce and I'm kind of drizzling all over because rice absorbs 
this nice soy sauce. I want to put garlic chip very last so it, it's still crispy. If you add garlic chip first and sauce next, I think garlic chip kind of loses that crispness. So make sure you're adding garlic chip at the last. This is my steak dinner. It is big and it is delicious and it will fill your stomach and heart. I'm going to be making a flank steak that has a crispy caper chimichurri. Flank steak is the steak that I grew up with. As an adult, my favorite steak is of course ribeye because ribeye is undoubtedly the best steak. However, I didn't even know ribeye existed until <laughs> I was an adult because I grew up having flank steak. It's a cheaper cut of meat, meaning it's really affordable. So if you have to cook for a family or just not trying to ball out on a Tuesday, flank steak is a really great everyday steak option. The first thing that I do when I honestly buy my steak is season it with salt because the only seasoning that actually can penetrate through meat is salt. So I want it to go through the entire steak. So as soon as I get it, I get that salt on there. A little bit of black pepper because it tastes good with red meat. And I wait until it comes up to room temperature before I get in the pan. For this steak, I'm making a version of chimichurri because it's bright and acidic and herby and a little spicy. And it's just so good. Chimichurri typically has like a little kick. Some folks will use dried chili flakes, but I really love cooking with fresh chilies. I put fresh chilies in everything. However, I am not that keen on like super spicy food. I just love the flavor chilies have. You can control the heat by adding the seeds. I'm choosing not to add the seeds. One of the dominant flavors of a chimichurri is the garlic and there should be a lot of it. Not like a little cute clove, an abundant amount of garlic. I'm using two cloves because they are a little bit on the big side, but the garlic should be abundant. It should be visible, but it should also be pretty finely minced up. So chimichurri is traditionally abundant in parsley, but anytime I cook with herbs, I try to sneak in a few in there because I like the variety, I like all the flavors. So I'm using just a handful of flat leaf parsley and a good handful of cilantro and just giving it a rough chop just to get into more manageable pieces. And then I'm putting in what's one of my favorite herbs is oregano and fresh oregano. All you have to do is pull the leaves off the sprigs and then add it into that cilantro and parsley before it all gets really, really finely chopped together. To break down the herbs, you could use a food processor you could use a pestle and mortar, but I like to use a double-handled knife, which is also called a mezzaluna knife. It is incredibly fun to use, but it also just really finely chops all the herbs without having too much effort from like hammering or the pestle and mortar, because gravity does all the work. And it's just honestly a really cool knife. <laughs> I'm adding capers to my chimichurri just because I grew up having capers with my flank steak. My mom would always do her flank steak in a mustard and caper sauce. And to me, the taste just like, they need to go hand in hand. So I'm gonna add in a little of that crispy caper feel by pan frying the capers in some olive oil. To bring together chimichurri, it's gotta get seasoned with a generous amount of salt, which will make Everything just tastes like itself. It won't really make it taste salty, but it will definitely wake up the flavors. Otherwise, it'll be a little flat. I love using lime juice in any dish that I can put lime juice in. I always have a bowl ready, so lime, lemon, vinegar, doesn't matter. You want it in there, it'll help break down those herbs even further. And once all that's mixed together, just cover it. Douse it, blanket it and some good olive oil. While the chimichurri sits and does its magic of breaking down, you can get onto cooking the steak. By this point, the steak should be at room temperature. I like to cover the steak with olive oil because if you cook steak and it starts getting dry, it makes the house really smoky and it's very uncomfortable. So oil all the steak around and add a little bit more oil to the pan and that way the steak will crisp up instead of smoking out. If you wanna do barbecue, do it outside, not inside. When cooking a plank steak in a large chunk like this, one thing that it might do is buckle. 
And when it buckles, it means that the entire surface area of the steak isn't touching the pan, which means the edge can get nice and crispy, but the whole center of the steak won't be touching the pan. Very comfortably, I have the chef hands where I can put my hands in the hot pan and not be bothered. But if you're not comfortable, use a spatula. But for those first one to two minutes of cooking, you want to make sure that the steak has full contact with the base of the frying pan. That way, everything gets nice and crisp. But the most important part is make sure it has that beautiful crust on all sides. Before cutting into the steak, you have to let it rest. It's a thick piece, there's a lot of juices happening. And if you put the knife right into it, all those juices will go everywhere. And the steak could dry out a little bit. We wanna keep it juicy, especially because it is a tougher cut of meat. Two things you need to keep in mind when slicing a flank steak, you wanna make sure you're cutting against the grain. I used to think that the lines on the flank steak were guidelines, and I would follow them to cut the steak and it calls for a pretty chewy cut. You wanna shorten the grain so there's those long lines across the steak. You wanna like trim against them, you know, be perpendicular to them. That way it's not as tough and chewy. Another thing to keep in mind is the thickness of your slices. Having thinner slices will make it easier to chew and you won't be chomping on your slice of steak. For me, this steak dish is so rooted in nostalgia because it's a cut I grew up with, but the sauce, Lord knows. When that sauce goes on top of that steak and just like, you have the liquid bleeding into the meat and you have those bits that sit on top and the crispy capers, there is so much flavor going on. You might wanna have a little piece of bread or something on the side because there should be no bits left behind once you eat the steak. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know how you like to prepare your steaks at home in the comment section below. That's it. I am afraid of spies. What's that? I'm afraid of hot food. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the flavor.